in the universe are enormous amounts of energy. In connection with a mass, energy becomes visible. The energy, for example, from an electron, does not primarily originate from the electron itself, but from the quantum vacuum or space-time. The electron is like a channel, which integrates energy from the quantum vacuum and converts it into another form of energy, for example, an electric field. The phenomenon which enables this energy conversion process is a broken symmetry. In electric systems, electrons and electric fields are of basic relevance. For this reason, broken symmetries play a fundamental role within every electric circuit. Matter and space-time are phenomena which have a close relationship. Since matter tells space-time how to curve and space-time tells matter how to move, it is obvious that so-called material things are rather a condition of space-time instead of phenomena which are disconnected from each other. In modern physics, not only a so-called force field in space is considered as a function of the quantum vacuum, but also the composition of an atom merely consists of quantum fluctuations. Matter is not an isolated thing, but a quality of space-time itself. If space-time determines how an atom will move, then space-time must contain a form of energy. A known method to extract energy from seemingly empty space-time is the Casimir effect. The Casimir experiment consists of two smooth plates which are positioned close to each other. Just before they touch, an attracting force emerges. The force occurs due to a difference of the quantum vacuum energy densities between and around the plates. In the absence of atoms and fields, the geometry of space-time is nearly perfectly symmetrical. If there are two plates in space-time, the plates will break the symmetry in a small way. The broken symmetry will integrate a part of the energy from the quantum vacuum into our observable reality. One possibility to extract more energy from the quantum vacuum, as by the Casimir effect, is to break the symmetry by active means. Such a forced asymmetry is a common electric field. Out of the quantum vacuum, virtual photons emerge permanently and shortly after they disappear again into that domain. Virtual photons disintegrate into virtual particle pairs. One partner of the virtual particle pair has a positive, the other partner a negative charge. The orientation of emerging virtual particle pairs is, in the absence of an electric charge, an unordered process. But the virtual particle pairs can be aligned or polarized. In the presence of an electric charge, for example an electron, virtual particle pairs will be polarized. 
So the electric field is an ongoing polarization of locally emerging virtual particle pairs or virtual photons progressing at light speed. Due to their very short life, virtual photons cannot move through space-time. All that moves through space-time is a polarization. Since virtual photons emerge locally from the quantum vacuum, the energy for a force on the electron comes from the local quantum vacuum as well. If a form of energy, for example an electric field, generates a force and acceleration onto an electron, then this energy will be newly generated at each point within the electron. So all that moves through space-time is a quality of information, which then initiates the quantum vacuum to generate a force and acceleration exactly where the electron currently is. An electric charge, such as a surrounding electric field, is also considered as a broken symmetry of the quantum vacuum. The asymmetry in space, which exists around electric charges, is what we call space asymmetry. Using this view, it is possible to define what force and energy are. A static force acts on two or several source charges if a space asymmetry exists which is not changed at that very moment. The potential flow will constantly be newly generated in time. That is why a dynamic potential flow is the cause of the electrostatic force. Work is done when the space asymmetry between two or more source charges changes at that very moment. For example, when electrons move away from each other. When changing the space asymmetry, the space asymmetry is only shifted, compressed or stretched. The density of all space asymmetries is in relation to energy symmetric systems conserved. The flow of an electric potential is a direct pre-stage or a raw material for an observable energy form. Since the perpetual generation of an electric potential from an electron does not require an observable energy input, the question why the observable energies are conserved has to be answered first. The following animation explains the energy conversion process in a simple electric circuit and will answer the question why the observable energies are conserved. The electrochemical potential difference within the battery breaks the symmetry of the quantum vacuum. This generates an input dipole. The input dipole is like an opened door. Through this door, the electric field can flow in. The electric field is shown as a wind which exerts pressure on electrons. The electrons are presented as sailing boats. As long as the input dipole remains intact, the electric wind is free of charge and everlasting. As soon as the circuit is closed, electrons move from the negative pole to the positive pole of the battery.
On their way through the electric circuit, the electrons pass through the filament of the light bulb. In the filament, they help to convert one form of energy into another form of energy. The electric wind is the primary energy supplier pushing the electrons through the filament of the light bulb. As a result, the energy which is generated in the light bulb does not originate from the battery, but from the quantum vacuum. The only thing the battery does is to break the symmetry of the quantum vacuum and put electrons at disposal. However, the electric wind can generate an observable energy only in combination with moving electrons. Since electrons do not get through so well due to the higher resistance in the light bulb, larger waves are caused. The splash water of the waves is emitted to the environment in the form of light and heat. Electrons are not energy suppliers, they only serve as an agent. They help to convert the electric wind into waves. The electric wind asymmetry is converted in the filament into light asymmetry and heat asymmetry. The asymmetry conversion process is shown by the bow wave of the electron. The potentials obtain an observable energy characteristic during the asymmetry conversion process. Asymmetry conversion is what we observe as observable or real energy. During this process, observable energy is literally created from the local quantum vacuum. If an electric wind is converted in the filament with the help of, for example, two electrons into another asymmetry, the unavoidable consequence is that two electrons flow out of the battery at the negative pole and two electrons flow into the battery at the positive pole. This symmetrizes the input dipole by two electrons. The symmetrizing process of the input dipole becomes visible by the chemical reaction. The uniform distribution of electrons in the filament and in the battery enforces the conservation of the observable energies involved. There is balance between the number of electrons which help to convert the electric wind asymmetry in the light bulb and the quantity of electrons which destroy the input dipole at the same time. This is a classic example for the self-symmetrizing mechanism in an electric system. The self-symmetrizing mechanism is the reason for the conservation of observable energy. As soon as electrons flow in and out of the battery, the chemical reactants are balanced via the flow of ions. The chemical reaction destroys the input dipole. As soon as the input dipole is destroyed, the electrochemical potential difference no longer exists. The door is closed, and for this reason, the electric wind from the quantum vacuum stops. No voltage, no current, no wind, no sailing. The chemical reactants hold the input dipole upright as long as possible. The chemical reaction destroys it. Basically, 
the chemical reaction is an unnecessary side effect because it has nothing to do with the generation of energy in the light bulb. The true energy supplier is the electric wind. We have to learn how to use the cost-free and everlasting electric wind without closing the door. <laughs>